Okay, so you obviously had a very successful career mom as a photographer, and uh, then the internet came along. 1998, is that when you guys yeah. launched Suzanette? Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that, because that was kind of a big surprise and a big life changer for you guys. Yeah, it all began, really. I've got to thank Danny Ash for this. She had a website called danny.com those days. And... Um, they used to, she used to license pictures from us for use on the internet. So there I was licensing pictures away to people and not really making serious bucks out of it. So I said, don't you think that we, do you think, Danny, that we should put up a website of our own? And she said in later years, that's the, that's the a good example of that no deed goes, that good deed goes unpunished <laughs> because we soon caught up. Yeah, he built a website which out, eclipsed everybody. Yeah, and we you, went, did all, you did all that. Bit, it, it, and it all happened three months before Google went up. So we beat Google by th- three months. Wow. In 19, end of 1998. And what was so, and, and what I think really lent itself to the success of your website, I mean, it's very much being in the right place at the right time, yes. was the fact that you owned all of your pictures. So that was a huge thing. So you had a huge because library. Because I'd fought with all the big boys. And <laughs> back then, the technology, the bandwidth wasn't so good that you could download video. Like video was not accessible at all. You could only do pictures, and even pictures took forever to download. Your video went down at 50K. Yeah. That was your little thing the side of a playing card. Yeah. Was your screen. And it would still take forever and, and to download. It take forever to download. It was right. all smudgy and horrible. Yeah. So really like photos were like the big thing and, and you had a thing. huge library and, you know, you'd shot all the biggest stars. So you guys started Suze.net not really knowing what the hell you were doing and it just like kind of blew up right away, right? I mean, you guys oh, were the, just The making... way the money came in, it was embarrassing. We were making $8,000 a day. That's insane. I spent it all on horses. <laughs> <laughs> she had 20 horses. 18, I think, actually was the official count, but close enough. Uh, it was breeding like it was the 60s. Because your children weren't, so. <laughs> <laughs> Empty nest syndrome with baby with uh, horses. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, so I mean, Suze.net just like kind of blew up. And then, um, and that's, and then I came in, what, like, Two years later, not even a year later, I started working for you guys pretty early. Two thousand or so. Okay, so like two years. Two years, yeah. I couldn't keep you out. I mean, I really thought that children would rebel against their parents. I never thought that Holly would become a photographer. That she would be a writer, and she's really great writer. She's really smart. But she insisted. It's terrible. Okay, first of all, I didn't insist. It was dad who talked me into moving down here and working for you guys. Dad told me that he was going to get me an apartment in Malibu in a Ferrari. And I got to oh. move into the guest house at Charnock and I got a Ford Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> but I, so I was going to Brooks Institute at the time uh, of photography. And I just, I really didn't feel like I fit in there. You know, it was very much a commercially based school and it, it put out a lot of like wedding photographers and commercial photographers. And um, I don't know, I just, I just wasn't, I wasn't into it. I, I, I didn't feel like I was learning anything really um, significant. And then, uh, you know, they, they asked me to come down and, and help out with the website a little bit. And at first I was just going to do some office admin stuff. Um, I wasn't going to shoot. And so I decided, okay, it's time for me to leave Santa Barbara. And I, and I moved back down to LA, but I wasn't going to, you know, I still was going to college. I went to Santa Barbara. Well, I was going to Santa Barbara city college and then Brooks. And then I moved down here and I went to Santa Monica city college. And then I ended up transferring to UCLA and graduating there with a degree in world literature in 2003, simply because I wanted a college degree. I just felt like that was important. It wasn't because I was going to do anything with that because <laughs> back then I, w- I was already working for you guys. And so I kind of knew where I was, where I was going. Um, but I, I did start working for you guys without the intention of staying. You know, I thought I was going to, I guess I thought I was going to be a fashion photographer or something like that. And I just found that the job really kind of suited me. You know, I really liked the environment that, that you created. You I have more control. I, I grew up in very much uh, what I call the Suze bubble, which I still kind of work in today, you know, where, you know, we worked with the best girls, we had a stylist, we had a set designer, we had incredible locations, you know, and it was like, 
it, it was so much fun. I mean, we could just come in to work and be like, what are we going to shoot next week? Like what concepts are we going to do? I mean, everything was up to us. You know, we could do anything that we wanted and, um, and, you know, make money off of it. And it was incredible. Yeah. It was so much fun. And then, you know, obviously things changed and, um, you know, a competition got really fierce and video came in. And that was something that, you know, I didn't know anything about and we didn't really know anything about. But I saw that the industry was moving in that direction. So I just started teaching myself video. I just started shooting. I just picked up a camera. I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And I just started and, you know, I just try. I just learned as I went along. It's funny when I look back at my my early videos that I shot, holy shit, are they terrible. The mic is like really far away from the model. There's like cords in the shot. I have like no idea what I'm doing. But, um, you know, it's something that I've, I've learned a lot about. I've been forced to learn a lot about recently. And, um, you know, I think my video work has much improved. But at, in, at my heart, I still feel like I'm very much a photographer. Like that's, you know, really where my, my strength lies. But, um, yeah, so, you know, I was, I was able to work in an environment that was, you know, completely structured by you. We had, you know, our own people that we worked with. And um, that's something that I've kind of replicated now in my career. You know, I'm very picky about the people that I have on set, very picky about the makeup artists, my assistants, that kind of stuff. And I've really created my own kind of world, the safe space, you know, where I feel that women um, have the opportunity to be sexually open and free and feel very safe about it. And that was something that, that you taught me. And, you know, I haven't been on many other porn sets because obviously why would I be? But there's been a couple that I've stumbled onto for whatever reason. And I have to say that sometimes the industry itself just grosses me out. I mean, the way that a lot of the producers, directors, photographers speak to their talent, treat their talent, um, is abhorrent to me. Um, just the locations that people shoot at is gross. Just, it's just very, I guess like what you would imagine a porn set would be like, um, that to me was just like, I couldn't, like if I, if I didn't grow up in the environment in the very unique environment that you created. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.